Hi guys, it's Tamara coming back at you with another video. Welcome back to my channel. Um, welcome back guys. I'm so glad to have you here with me today. We're going to be starting a new conversation, which is um, talking about emotionally detached and unhealthy parents. Um, <laughs> this is a topic that I continue to get questions about on my blog, on my website, and even here on YouTube. And one of the questions that I get, which tends to be um, pretty revealing about parenting, um, is the question of how do I make myself internally healthy when in fact my family, primarily my mother or my father, has contributed to my low self-esteem, my negative core beliefs about myself, my perception of life around me, my identity, and my belonging in the world. So I want to start this conversation by talking a little bit about cognitive behavior therapy and kind of examining some of our core beliefs, some of our negative self-talk, some of our um, negative assumptions, um, and our feelings of, of low or high self efficacy. So I'm going to break these, these terms down for you as I always do. I think the more you understand about yourself, and some of these terms, the better that you know, the better that you're going to feel. Um, I think, you know, talking over your head and making this complicated does no good for any of us. So, I'm gonna break these things down throughout this series, which is about uh, toxic parents. So the obvious benefits for you in this video today is that you're going to learn some new concepts. You're also going to learn some new terminology. And I kind of want to get your mind uh, stimulated to talk a little bit about your own toxic parent if you, um, in fact, have been exposed to one. I think um, having a, a really good, loving and supportive and compassionate mother or father is quite rare. Um, and that's the sad part about the work that I do. Um, I get to see that a lot of people are internally um, and psychologically destroyed by their toxic parents. So uh, we're going to talk a little bit about that during this series. So let's go ahead and get started. I want to define some concepts for you. So I'm going to define them right now and I'm going to post some descriptions over here so that you can follow along with me and you won't feel so lost um, trying to understand uh, these concepts. So the first concept that I want to bring up is a concept known as self-efficacy. Self-efficacy um, is a term that is used to describe um, how we feel, whether positively or negatively, about our ability to be um, effective, right? So, so how we view our ability to be successful, how we view our abilities to um, do what we need to do, um, to, to conceptualize our careers, to operate effectively within our families, to operate effectively within our, our jobs every day. Um, Self-efficacy, so how we see ourselves as being effective, right? So we can either see that in a positive way or a negative way. I'm not as effective as I want to be. That's known as negative self-efficacy. I'm really good at what I do. And if I put my mind to, you know, to something, I'm going to get it done. That's positive self-efficacy. Okay, so self-efficacy. The, the whole idea of, of how effective do we think that we can be positively or negatively. The next term is negative self-talk. Negative self-talk is, is another cognitive behavior therapy uh, word, and it, it's a term, and it basically describes the language that we use to talk to ourselves. Talk to ourselves, right? You're not good enough. You're not smart enough. You're not pretty enough. You're not talented enough. You're never going to make it. You're never going to be anything. Um, negative self-talk can stem from a variety of things, and I want to point this out. Um, negative self-talk can, can derive from our own view of ourselves, right? So things that we say about ourselves or think about ourselves that are not good. Um, negative self-talk can also stem from external forces, meaning what people have told us about ourselves. So let's say you have a very emotionally uh, abusive, uh, as well as verbally abusive parent growing up, and uh, all you heard all your life growing up under this toxic parent was you're always going to be like your daddy you're always going to be like your grandmother you're always going to be like your aunt you know you're never going to be anything you're never going to graduate school you're just a loser stop acting stupid all of those things that you may have heard from the toxic parent that you were raised by or that you know, you, you were in the environment with growing up can contribute to that negative self-talk. So you begin to internalize what they've said to you. You swallow literally what this toxic parent has said to you. And then you begin to internalize those negative voices 
and distort them into your own voices, right? So the negative self-talk of I'll never be anything was once an external verbal comment from somebody else, that negative toxic parent. But the more you heard it, the more you began to internalize it and distort it into your own language. And so therefore, you now say to yourself, I'm never going to be anything. I'm never going to be, you know, I, I can't, you know, I'm going to be like my father who's a drug addict, right? Negative self-talk. The next term is core beliefs. Um, in this video, core beliefs are negative because we're talking about a foundational belief system about ourselves, negative core beliefs. Those negative core beliefs are basically this. I was told that I'm not going to be anything. I'm not going to make it. I'm not going to succeed. I'm not going to be successful. Um, so I have distorted those terms. I have distorted them, excuse me, that language. And now I've internalized that, that language. And now I believe that I'm not going to be anything. So now my core belief, which is the foundation of who I believe I am, consists of those negative uh, statements that I heard. So let me go over that one more time. So, so somebody, your parent, that toxic parent has said something to you, you're never going to be anything. And so you've internalized their negative verbal abuse to you. And so now that you've internalized it, you've now distorted it and created that as your own self negative talk. And now that has become the core belief that you live by that I'm never going to be anything. And so that core belief is like the foundation of everything. And so everything that you do based on that core belief, that foundational belief, everything that you do is going to make you feel uh, like you're a loser or like you can't do anything right or like you're never going to measure up. Okay, there's two more concepts I want to describe uh, and then um, we will try to wrap up, okay? So, so the next one is uh, negative rules, okay? Negative rules. Well, rules and assumptions. I'll do both. So a, a cognitive rule, I'm going to call it uh, a cognitive rule, is basically a set of musts, shoulds, okay, that you say about yourself. And so the must might sound like this in your head. I must achieve because if I don't achieve, I'm going to be a loser. I must keep a job because if I get fired, if I resign or if I lose my job, I'm not going to be what I need to be. I must have children because if I don't have children, I'm going to come across as inadequate. I'm not going to come across as a woman. I'm not going to come across as pleasing to my husband or my family. I'm never going to give my parents grandchildren. I must have children, right? So consider the I must as this firm um, core belief that you have. You must, you must, you must. When you say you must, you are setting a high, sometimes unrealistic and unhealthy standard and expectation for yourself. Um, and those unhealthy and unrealistic expectations of yourself really do stem from those core beliefs and that negative self-talk, right? And that, that negative self-efficacy, right? So musts, must, must says I must or I won't be anything. That is so very imprisoning when you think about it because if you can't realistically measure up to your musts, how are you going to feel? Definitely like a failure, okay? But we all get trapped in that process and, and it's a psychological and emotional and sometimes traumatic process that has been triggered by a toxic parent, okay? The last one is uh, cognitive assumptions. I'm going to call them cognitive assumptions. That is basically um, your ability or your, um, not your ability, but your um, involvement in making assumptions about things, okay? I, I also call it a cognitive distortion, which is mind reading. So it's kind of like, did that person over there just give me a dirty look? Is that because my shoes are small today? Or is that because, you know, those are assumptions. I, I don't think she likes me. And I think she doesn't like me because I don't measure up. Wait a minute, she doesn't like me because I don't have a good job. Wait, wait, it's because my income is low. Those are negative uh, cognitive assumptions. Um, I also have, let me look at this really quickly, guys, because I also have um, another example that I thought was really good about um, assumptions. Oh, here we go. 
All right, so, um, so here's some really good assumptions. So here's some examples, okay? Here's, here's one. If I ask for something I need, I will be put down. If I ask for something I need, I will be put down. No matter what I do, it will never be good enough. That's a, that's a cognitive assumption. That's a negative cog cognitive assumption. If I can't control my food intake, I will never be able to control anything in my life, okay? So the one thing I want you to consider about negative assumptions is that they're assumptions. They're not factual. The other part of that is that these assumptions um, really are really high in expectations, and it's unrealistic. You're never going to be able to meet the expectations of your assumptions or your negative core beliefs. Um, the only way to get past these negative core beliefs is to work, and I mean work hard at, at rebuilding your insides, at rebuilding your mind, at rebuilding your soul and your heart um, and your, your, you know, your self-concept, right? Because if you don't rebuild it, you're going to work off of the things that I talked about in this video. You're going to work from, I should say, the things that I've talked about in this video, such as negative core beliefs, negative self-talk negative rules and assumptions, right? And negative self-efficacy. There's a way to unwire this. And so I'm hoping to get to that in this video series about toxic parents, emotionally detached parents, unhealthy parents. I also wanna talk about parenting styles. Uh, there's three, uh, authoritarian parents, authorita authoritative, excuse me, uh, authoritarian and then permissive parenting and so I want to bring those up too and I also want to give you some tips on how you can begin the journey to healing from very toxic and unhealthy parents all right guys thank you so much for being with me today I encourage you to give this video a thumbs up if it was helpful to you um, <clears throat> excuse me also hit the subscribe button which i think is over here um hit the subscribe button so that you can get updates uh on the videos that i post i post on mondays and fridays but i also sometimes give you a bonus on wednesdays so stay tuned for those bonuses because sometimes it's either me giving you tools or tips or i bring up another idea that we can kind of talk about as we're going through the week so um stay tuned for that if you guys know philippe matthews i encourage you to go to his youtube channel and check out our interview coming up on Friday here at five o'clock Eastern time. He's going to be talking to me or interviewing me about a uh, hot system dominance. And it has a lot to do with what I'm talking about here. So that's one of the reasons why I'm mentioning it, but go ahead and, and switch over to his channel. I will be talking about hot system dominance. And I think it's going to be helpful for our conversation as we, we move forward. All right, guys, thanks so much for being with me today. Today. Yikes, I stumble over that every time, every single video. So, um, but thanks for being with me today, guys, and I will talk to you really soon. Bye-bye.